Okay, so here's your electromagnetic spectrum. You got your wide band, low frequencies, and then it gets a bit tighter, and then it gets even tighter, and then it gets even tighter, and even tighter. So we've all seen the charts that say, you know, X-rays, gamma rays, uh, radio frequencies, microwaves. It goes up and up. I think I'm, I think I'm misconstruing the order, but nevertheless, down here you have what are called ELFs, extremely low frequencies. Up here you have what are called EHFs, extremely high frequencies. These in this general range are considered millimeter waves because these are measured in millimeters. They're wavelengths. These are very wide. Same thing in the radio frequency spectrum with your AM, FM, and all the rest. The wider the wavelength, the more easily it penetrates buildings and the further the distance that it can run. It can kind of go over mountains and hills. The more short the wavelength, the more interference that it runs into when it hits buildings or metal or different interference points. So, people are trying to figure out what is 5G. 4G and 3G are important to understand before we get into that discussion. So, for lack of a decent way to put it, let's just say 3G is here. 4G is here. And 5G is here. And it covers this whole zone. Now, everybody remembers when the iPhone 3G came out or 3G phones were out, they were using anywhere from, let's just say, and again, don't quote my numbers because I don't, I haven't looked all the specific numbers up in a while, but let's say 100 megahertz to 1 gigahertz. 4G was somewhere from 300 megahertz to 4.6 gigahertz. If you've ever seen the 5GHZ on your Wi-Fi router, that should not be confused with 5G uh, cellular radiation or cellular technology because it's different. The 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi spectrum is literally just this one zone. GHZ. So 5 gigahertz stands for a specific number along this range, whereas 5G stands for the fifth generation of wireless technology. The reason why 5G is important has a little bit to do with um, electromagnetic radiation in general, because 3G and 4G present that, and there are many, many studies that show that having your cell phone close to your head, that having a home baked in Wi-Fi, 4G, 3G, 5G, routers, extenders, base stations is not good and that you should limit that if at all possible. But the 5G presents an entirely new issue because of a few key frequencies somewhere higher up in this span, 8 gigahertz and 60 gigahertz. Now keep in mind, 5G goes from I feel like it's around 300 megahertz, MHZ, million hertz, to, it's not 300 megahertz, it's about 800 mega. I forget what it is, but to 300 GHZ, which is way at the very top. I don't, I don't even have enough space to write it. So most companies, when they're given 5G, so for example, you have T-Mobile, Let's just say Sprint before they merge. T-Mobile, Sprint, AT&T, and Verizon. They will all be given different ranges, different permission along this range of 4G saying, T-Mobile, you can have phones under this number, this number, and this number. AT&T, you have to use this number, this number, this number. Like Verizon, a radio station? kind of like a radio station. Yeah, in, in fact, just like a radio station. That's the point of a radio station so that you don't overlap. Don't yes, exactly, with the signal that is allotted for someone else until you get far enough away into a different city where the cell tower from let's say 107.9 in Los Angeles will never reach North Carolina. So 107.9 in North Carolina is allotted for someone else. But there's the FCC and the international standards community. They manage 
who gets what and what gets where. The problem is, just like the pharmaceutical industry, just like the governments, just like the insurance industry, former uh, big wigs, we'll just say, in the technology space, then go and get jobs at the FCC. Just like former big wigs in the pharmaceutical space, then go and get jobs at the FDA and the CDC. So they're really becoming an extension of the very industries that they're meant to regulate. Which is why you can't even talk about 5G without getting labeled, you know, something which we won't even mention. So the important issue with 5G are these two specific frequencies, and there are probably more, but these are the two that I'm that people are most aware of. The 8 gigahertz spectrum, which is the absorption point of iodine, and the 60 gigahertz spectrum which is the absorption of oxygen meaning when a frequency is activated radiation is pulsated out of a tower at this specific frequency the oxygen in the immediate area or in the beam forming destination of where that pulse is generated is asphyxiated and, and truly really that's not the issue the hemoglobin in your blood is unable to use the oxygen molecule because the O2 is broken into just O. So it's not O2, which means it oxygen. It breaks away the oxygen Correct. from the molecule. Exactly. It breaks, it breaks the covalent bond of the oxygen. The electricity that's holding them together. Okay, right. At a, at, a, at a subatomic level, it breaks up the electricity that holds the two oxygen molecules together in a bigger ring, if you will. Put that there, and then it goes boom, boom, boom. And so now you have oh, 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 free radical oxygen, which is not breathable, it's not usable by the hemoglobin in your blood. Same with iodine at eight gigahertz. So in the 5G range, yes, this frequency down here, this relatively benign because it's already been used in 3G and 4G range, is fine. It, it, it. You know, it's what most companies will be using to piggyback less your internet. Less bad, basically. Oh, it's less bad in the sense that your body knows what to do with it because it's already been dealing with it with 3G and 4G for the past several years. But it will be, play, you know, internet will be served up for AT&T, let's just say under this general, if you live in the rural areas and under this space, if you live in the city. And Verizon will be here if you live in the rural areas, and it'll be here if you live in the city. Because, keeping in mind, this the towers are much more closely placed in the city. I mean, you think it would be the other way around because the better buildings. penetration happens at this end of the spectrum. But that's how you can tell that the point is not efficiency. The point is control, which is why they have... They're, they're doing the more expensive thing, which is putting more towers in more places, no pun intended, in the urban areas and less towers sparsely in the rural areas where there are less people to control or, or serve Internet to. Uh, so 5G is really just a range. There are plenty of points along this range that do not bother the oxygen or the iodine in your blood. However, the 60 gigahertz millimeter wave frequency and the eight gigahertz millimeter wave frequency both affect how your body regulates oxygen and iodine in your blood and these were developed as a military technology so that it can drive a tank a hundred yards from someone blasts an invisible microwave gun at someone across the street and choke them to death without ever touching them that was the point of this development of this technology, and it has been integrated into a consumer technology that happens to have enough available IP addresses along this entire spectrum to also give you the Internet of Things, which means your cell phone can talk to your watch, which it already does via Bluetooth, but your toaster can now talk to your car, which can talk to your garage door opener, which can talk to your alarm and your thermostat. So there's this entire smart grid placed in and around your life through wireless technology. And the reason the spectrum is so long is so that each one can have a unique, so that can, there can be enough unique IP addresses. Radio stations. 
more or less, yeah. So instead of just 88.1 to 107.9 or whatever, it can go 88.1 to a million and 88. You know, it can just be a much wider spectrum. Much more room to work on. So that each one can have a more, like, so that there is the potential for bigger growth in 5G. Yes, you have your consumer division of the 5g spectrum but you also have your military division of the 5g spectrum which they don't like to talk about and they don't like people to know about because i believe they plan on using this for things in the future that they don't want you aware of and they just want you to buy into this like it's the next evolution of wireless technology and in a way it is but nothing about the 4g or 3g spectrum affected my ability to breathe so now we're getting into issues because now we're talking about my life here, my breath. So in a nutshell, that is the 5G spectrum explained and a little bit of why people are beginning to suggest that as they turn these towers on and satellites really on that actually deal with the bulk of the signal, right? The towers are all these like fat light towers that have you know, these big things at the top that kind of like giant cone heads at the they top. They look fairly harmless when you see They look them. Ha very harmless. They're, uh, we see them all the time in the city where we live. But what these will do is they'll introduce radiation poisoning to people's cells. At a, well, so, is, so, is, so does 3G and 4G, but it's just at a much more benign rate. The increased millimeter wave exposure introduces radiation poisoning that in turn generates what are called exosomes or cellular waste or a function of your immune system to get rid of damaged versions of itself so that it can make way for, um, you know, cleaning you out and restoring you. Only pharmaceutical based science calls those exosomes viruses. And then you get into the whole discussion of what, you know, COVID and how that relates to 5G. But it's not just as simple as, oh, 5G causes COVID. It's not that simple because it's a much more nuanced conversation that requires a bit of understanding about how electromagnetic radiation actually works. So what are the symptoms for radiation poisoning? The symptoms for radiation poisoning, you know, very simple, similar to Chernobyl are... They very, they, in many ways, they have the same symptoms as COVID, put it like that, including and especially loss of taste and smell. Um, extreme radiation poisoning obviously will make your skin melt, but we're talking like, but not relatively speed. We're not talking Chernobyl status here. We're talking mm -hmm. microwave oven on for forever status. You know, if you stand next to the microwave for 10 years of your life, something will probably happen to your eyeballs. You won't die right away. However, it is not a good thing to stand next to the microwave. And what these towers are and what these satellites are are basically large, high-powered microwave ovens that are emitting uh, microwave radiation in conjunction with radio frequency uh, radiation and gamma radiation, more likely once you get into 6G and 7G and all that. What's the uh, quote from the man in the early 1900s about um, when we started seeing frequencies in the air? Remember that? Yeah, he was basically just saying that the... Um, this was when all the, like, like some sort of radiation was, was uh, uh, um, introduced when you started to see people getting sick from... That, that all of the pandemics from 1918 to 1950 40 something i forget the hong kong one uh were all at a time when radio towers were introduced in the early 1900s when radar was introduced and again all of that stuff overlaps with this stuff here radar and radio waves um telephone no well not telephone wires but wireless telephones for sure so again everything everything is on the electromagnetic spectrum including things like light and bluetooth and sound all, all that's here but it's an energy it's a way of d describing energy that in some cases is very benign but in other cases can be very very dangerous especially when you're getting into this range here